SpaceX's workhorse rocket, the Falcon 9, has had a pretty successful year of launches. With seven flights and seven successful landings under its belt, SpaceX is gearing up for number eight with the Amos 17 mission. SpaceX confirmed that the static fire test on the Falcon 9 was complete and data was being assessed. With launch currently scheduled from Cape Canaveral Air Force Station, Launch Complex 40. According to payload manufacturer, Amos 17 is scheduled to lift off no earlier than Monday, August 5th. But just like last week when the aerospace company attempted the first time to launch its Falcon 9 rocket for its 18th cargo resupply mission to the International Space Station, weather could once again cause another delay. SpaceX had launch planned for Amos 17 on the 3rd of August, but only 30% go for launch as calculated by the U.S. Air Force. The primary weather concerns for launch will be lightning and thick cloud layers, according to the 45th Weather Squadron. In the event of a delay, weather improves slightly at 50% go for a Monday launch attempt. With most things in rocketry, the adage, better late than never, almost invariably holds true when dealing with late-stage launch vehicle processing. And SpaceX will be taking that to the extreme with this launch for reasons that will become clear. If SpaceX can avoid the growing probability of minor delays, generally an annoying non-issue more than anything else, customer will certainly be appreciative. But the most important thing is ensuring the safe orbital delivery of Amos 17. In this video, Engineering Today will discuss SpaceX Falcon 9 launch of Amos 17 satellite scheduled for Monday. What is Amos 17 satellite? Why SpaceX will preclude landing attempt and instead sacrifice the booster for this Amos 17 satellite launch? Let's get into details. Amos 17 is owned by Spacecom Limited, an Israeli company that owns the satellite built by Boeing. While a successful static fire test isn't considered a huge milestone for SpaceX anymore, it's particularly important in this case because the customer, Spacecom, previously lost a satellite payload on a SpaceX flight in 2016. Spacecom's Amos 6, an Israeli-built satellite that was destroyed in September 2016 during a catastrophic Falcon 9 failure. Spacecom effectively took the insurance funds it received from the loss of Amos 6, purchased Amos 17 via Boeing, and then chose a contract option that gave the company a free Falcon 9 launch instead of taking a cash payout of $50 million. Since that accident, SpaceX has no longer placed one of its customer payloads on the rocket for the static fire test. Be it financial necessity or a genuine decision to trust SpaceX that led Spacecom to manifest its replacement satellite on Falcon 9, a second failure and loss of payload, Amos 17, during this launch would be a spectacular embarrassment and a major wound to SpaceX's growing reputation as a reliable launch provider. If there is any launch in particular that SpaceX explicitly wants to avoid a failure on, it's probably Amos 17. Aside from the unusual phrasing of SpaceX's static fire confirmation, stating and said that the company is assessing data, the weather forecast for the launch of Amos 17 is looking about as dreary as it was during SpaceX's most recent July 25th launch, CRS-18. CRS-18 was scrubbed once before the instantaneous launch window luckily coincided with an only partially metaphorical gap in the clouds. However, scheduled to lift off no earlier than August 5th, the Amos 17 ComSat launch features a comparatively luxurious 90-minute window, giving SpaceX a much better shot at threading the needle. SpaceX's team at Cape Canaveral aims to launch Amos 17 just 11 days after the last launch from Pad 40, which occurred July 25th with a Dragon supply ship heading for the International Space Station. The 11-day turnaround at Pad 40 would be the shortest span between liftoffs from the same launch pad in SpaceX's history. 
The Falcon 9 rocket launching with AMO 7 will fly in expendable mode without any landing legs. The heavy weight of AMO 17 at some 6.5 metric tons, that's 14,330 pounds, fully fueled requires all of the Falcon 9's lift performance to deliver it into a geostationary transfer orbit, stretching more than 22,000 miles over the equator. This will be the second time SpaceX has flown one of its Falcon 9 rockets in the new generation Block 5 configuration without attempting a recovery of the first stage booster. The booster being used has flown twice previously, in July and November 2018, but will not be recycled like its two previous flights. Instead, it's likely to end up in the ocean. That means spectators won't hear any sonic booms this time. Spacecom CEO and President David Pollack said, AMO-17 is a project with forward-looking technologies and provides a significant boost for our satellite fleet's capacity, operational flexibility, expansion to more regions, and technological superiority. Providing unique turnkey solutions for a range of uses will provide our customers with key competitive advantages and expand our partners and Spacecom's corporate opportunities in the years to come. Intended to improve TV, cellular and internet services to Africa, Europe and the Middle East, AMO-17 has an expected lifespan of about 20 years and will orbit 36,000 kilometers above Central Africa. Spacecom hopes the digital high-throughput satellite will be able to tap into the needs of mobile operators and telecom service providers looking to reach Africa's growing population in rural and outlying areas. Spacecom already has a sales backlog of 58 million US dollars for communication services into the African market. The company is anticipating further orders will follow the launch. Africa is a huge continent, said an official at Spacecom. It's the fastest growing continent. By the end of this century, Asia and Africa will be equal in terms of population which means that in terms of the percentage of the young population, it will be the largest young population in the world, so there will be a demand for content. It's hard to reach some points on the ground there, so a satellite solves that problem. From its prime audio position over Africa, AMO-17 is capable of covering an entire country with a single beam. It's 35 meters long with its solar panels open. In 2015, the company lost contact with its AMOS-5 satellite and a year later, AMOS-6 was destroyed days before its scheduled launch when a SpaceX rocket exploded. SpaceX has actually chosen, presumably at the request or suggestion of Spacecom, to expend a Falcon 9 Block 5 booster in support of the AMO-17 launch. Confirmed by SpaceX to be B1047.2, the company will preclude a landing attempt and instead sacrifice a booster that might otherwise fly a dozen or more launches to give Spacecom a larger safety margin and help AMO-17 start serving customers as quickly as possible. The sooner AMO-17 can reach its final geostationary orbit (GEO). The sooner Spacecom can begin generating revenue from the satellite. Finally, SpaceX fairing recovery vessel Go Miss Tree, formerly Mr. Stephen, has just departed Port Canaveral on August 1st and is headed nearly a thousand kilometers, 600 miles east into the Atlantic Ocean for what could be the ship's second successful fairing catch ever. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe for more videos like this. Hit the like button if you find the video interesting and kindly provide your valuable feedback in the comment section. This will help us to improve.